Good morning, everyone. A very good morning to Honorable Minister, Dr. Beduram Bhusal. I am pleased to welcome all of you to this conference on delivering for nutrition on equity and inclusion, our first time in Nepal. I will not take a lot of time and I'll hand it over to our session moderator for this session, Dr. Purnima Menon. Dr. Purnima Menon is a senior director for food and nutrition where she oversees three units within IFPCGIR, Nutrition, Diets and Health, Poverty, Gender and Inclusion, and Market Rates and Institution, and is based in New Delhi. Her, uh, Dr. Menon has research experience in India, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Haiti, Vietnam, and Nepal, and has published extensively and invests deeply in research translations in her engagement with policy communities. I welcome Dr. Purnima Menon to give an overview of the conference and to formally invite Dr. Beduram Bhusal for his chief guest remarks. Welcome, dear friends, Honorable Minister, welcome to the conference. Um, let me first say a couple of opening remarks and then formally welcome uh, our chief guest. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here in person for the first ever in-person hybrid delivering for nutrition conference. Um, I want to say a couple of words about equity and why this conference matters to, uh, matters to us today. We live in a world which is too unequal for too many people today. We live in a world where the right to food, the right to nutrition, and in many cases, even the right to human rights is not being met. Despite our tremendous progress in science, despite the tremendous commitments that have been made around the world to solving the problems of hunger and malnutrition, too many people today are, are hungry. Billions of people cannot afford a healthy diet. Um, and many, many vulnerable populations, especially women, children, adolescents, uh, suffer the consequences of malnutrition. Now, South Asia faces layers of inequity. Those of us who have lived, who have been born, lived, and grown up in the region understand how deep the, the multiple facets of inequity can be for so many in our society. We have to remember that inequity and the the manifestations of inequity are, at the end of the day, societal choices. They're choices that people make about how we view other people in this world. They're choices that people make about how we deliver on our promises. And in that sense, whether you look at gender, caste, religion, geography, or education, solving inequity is also a choice. Solving for the problems that we face in equity and inclusion in nutrition is a choice that every single one of us makes every single day. Telling the stories that many of the researchers in the room have brought about inequity is a choice that you have made in research. Delivering programs and policies to solve the challenges of equity and inclusion in nutrition is a choice that many of you in this room have made. And so I really want to thank from the bottom of my heart the choices that all of you have also made to be with us today to discuss this critical set of topics. Um, it is absolutely essential that we engage together in this region uh, in dialogue, using evidence and using our experiences on how to solve the challenges of inequity. I'm especially grateful for the political commitment of the Honorable Minister for Agriculture uh, and, and Livestock today. Uh, your presence today, Honorable Minister, is also a choice that you have made to be with us. And therefore, it's a choice that you are making and demonstrating to us of the value of engaging in dialogue on issues related to equity and inclusion in nutrition. Without further ado, let me uh, invite um, Honorable Minister Beduram Bhusal to join us uh, in sharing his opening remarks to help us kick off this conference. Um, let me introduce him first. He is a distinguished figure in Nepalese politics and governance, currently serves as a Minister for Agriculture and Livestock in the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal. Uh, like us, he too is a researcher. Dr. Bhusal completed his PhD dissertation on the historical development of people's multi-party democracy. He has undertaken several key national responsibilities in Nepal, including membership in the National Assembly, from June 2001 to January 2007, and again from March 2020 to present. He has served as member of the Intermediate Parliament uh, from 2007 to 2008 May, 
Uh, and he's also uh, an honored awardee in recognition of his multiple contributions. He's been honored with prestigious awards such as the Pushpalal National Award and the Hari Abhinav Award in 2073. His leadership and, and intellectual contributions continue to shape the political landscape of Nepal and foster in, international cooperation. Uh, I remain in gratitude, sir, for your presence with us today. Uh, and also really want to extend uh, before I hand over to you our incredible gratitude to our local co-hosts, uh, IIDS. We are joined also by uh, the leadership of IIDS today and we'll hear, hear more from them later. Uh, we could not have pulled this off uh, without you as well as our regional partners, UNICEF Rosa and many, many, many others in the room today, um, including regional bodies such as SARC. I will say a little bit more to introduce each of the representatives of our regional co-hosts and our national co-hosts a little bit later, uh, but I'd like to welcome you to offer your remarks, Honorable Minister. Thank you. Thank you. A respected chairperson, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I am pleased to be here in this regional conference, delivering for nutrition in South Asia. First of all, I extend my heartfelt appreciation to the host and co-host of this conference. Delivering for nutrition is a pertinent issue of this time. It transcends borders, cultures, and demographic distinctions as it addresses the basic rights of all people, regardless of their gender, ethnicity, financial condition, and more. Food and nutrition security is the priority tax of our government. We have constitutional provision re regarding the right to food and food sovereignty is a fundamental right of the people. Likewise, we have formulated right to food and food security act. Our food policy and the agriculture development strategy has addressed the food and nutrition security needs of the most disadvantaged rural population, including lactating and pregnant women, Janazatis, Dalits, and groups in disadvantaged regions with the food and nutrition security program in the country. In the context of South Asia, we must honestly acknowledge the ongoing disparities in nutrition that persist in the region, despite being home of some of the world's fastest growing economies, South Asia continues to face with nutrition imbalances. These imbalances are stark reminders that there is still much work to be accomplished socioeconomically disadvantaged households are often at the core of this issue. Limited resources, lack of information, and restricted access to services make them more vulnerable to undernutritionment. This harmful cycle of poverty and malnutrition endures affecting the health and potential of individuals, especially children who represent our future. Furthermore, we cannot overlook the role of gender imbalances in exacerbating disturbance, differences in health and nutrition outcomes, particularly for women and girls. Women contribute significantly to agriculture in many South Asian countries, yet their contributions to the food system are often undervalued and underlooked. 
this oversight has effects for their own nutrition and that of their families. It is vital to acknowledge the interconnected relationship between agriculture, food system, and nutrition outcomes. We must realize the complex relationship among these factors to effectively address nutrition disparities, achieving equity and inclusion in nutrition necessity, necessitates a multi prognant approach. We must work collaboratively bridging the gaps between health, agriculture, and social development sectors. To ensure that health and nutrition programs, social safety needs, and access to nutrition diets reach all those in need. In conclusion, I want to emphasize my unwavering dedication to advancing equity in nutrition and contributing to positive change. We all, the governments, civil societies, private sectors, and individuals have a role to play. Together, we can dismantle the barriers that perpetuate nutrition imbalances and create a brighter and healthier future for all. Let us stand united with a shared view of South Asia where every individual can access the nutrition he or she need to flourish. Thank you. Can you all hear? Yes, great. Thank you, Honorable Minister. Those were really um, excellent remarks to remind us of why it's so important that we are here today, looking really across the contributions of multiple sectors to help us focus in on uh, issues of solving some of the equity and inclusion challenges uh, in nutrition. Uh, to kick off the rest of the opening session, I'd like to now invite up to, uh, to the stage uh, our, our panelists, uh, Neha Kumar first, uh, who's a senior research fellow with uh, IFPRI in the Nutrition, Diets and Health Unit. Neha is an economist by training and has accumulated evidence from diverse sectors in, in, train, in tackling nutrition challenges, including agriculture, social protection, and, and gender. Let me also invite Jamaluddin Ahmed, who's uh, with the SARC Secretariat. He's a career diplomat, and prior to joining SARC, he served uh, in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Government of Bangladesh in various capacities. Welcome. Let me also invite um, Dr. Bishwas Gauchan, who is the Executive Director of the Institute for Integrated Development Studies, IIDS. And I believe we're going to need another chair on stage as well. Thanks. So if that can be arranged, please. Um, he's the executive director at the uh, Institute for Integrated Development Studies at IIDS. As I mentioned, you know, uh, our local co-host for Delivering for Nutrition today, thank you so much again for, for being here. Uh, Dr. Gauchan has served uh, in UNDP, both in Nepal and Africa, for 10 years in different uh, capacities uh, and has been um, a staunch partner for IFPRI and the CGIR's work in, in South Asia and in Nepal, among other things. And last but not least, uh, on behalf of uh, the UNICEF Regional Director for South Asia, Sanjay Vijayshekra, who could not be with us today, I'm pleased to invite and welcome Jivai Murira. Please, Jivai, join us here, who's a Regional Nutrition Advisor with uh, UNICEF Regional Office. Uh, without further ado, let me hand it over to you, Neha, to uh, lead us through an overview of the conference itself. Thank you. Thanks, Purama. Um, I do need some technical. I, 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 
Thanks a lot. Um, I would like to welcome everyone to this very important conference, uh, which Purnima spoke a little bit about. I'll uh, try to be brief. Um, wh why are we doing this conference? It's, as we know, nutrition is determined by mul multiple, it is a, it's a, it's a outcome that's affected by multi-sectoral things. You know, it's the health system, um, the food access. So it's important that we have a comprehensive approach uh, to, to address this, um, you know, so people have access to and choice of healthy foods. Um, and what is really important when we are thinking about nutrition is uh, what are, how do different um, programs work? And that's where implementation research comes in. And it's really important to understand what are things that work and what don't work. And that's where we really need to uh, have these discussions and, and conferences uh, like such. Um, to give you a brief background of, of, the, of this conference, it's been going on since 2016. Uh, and until 2020, it was primarily India, India focused. Uh, and in 2020, it became a regional platform um, and it brings together researchers, program implementers, policy makers, uh, working in and focusing on South Asia uh, to, to deliberate on innovative ways to transform diets and improve nutrition outcomes for all. Um, it is a collaborative regional platform. It, it, we couldn't do it without uh, our collaborators. It's spearheaded by if pre portion with substantial reliance on country, regional, global organizations and institutions. Um, our co-hosts play a key role in the success. Uh, for example, reviewing conference materials, refining concepts, assessing and scoring abstracts, uh, and promoting the event uh, and you know, pro programming the agenda and last but not the least, also financial support. So we couldn't have done this without our co-hosts. Um, and, and the success is testament to the collective stakeholders' efforts. Um, maybe I don't need to spend too much on why equity and inclusion after Purnima's wonderful uh, uh, you know, comments on that. Just to say that equity, when we think about equity, we need to understand that not everybody starts with the same, uh, uh, same place. So we need to give them a level, level playing ground. So nutrition interventions should recognize this and allocate resources such that everybody gets at the same uh, place. And inclusion is about not leaving anyone behind. Um, so, you know, in the past several years, we've faced the pandemic. Um, we've, we are facing lots of wars as we speak. And these crisis situations have a bigger impact on those that are marginalized, so it really pushes us behind. Um, very quickly, we have four, five themes in, our, in, in the conference this year. Uh, it's agriculture, food environments, health systems, diets, and social protection. And within each of these themes, we wanted to bring in the, diff, the equity and inclusion um, aspects. So um, the call for abstracts was open for about a month and a half. We got a staggering 374 abstracts, um, of which 245 were from research and 129 from implementation. Um, and the purpose for having this call was to identify regional talent, provide a platform for nutrition professionals to showcase their work, particularly early and mid-career researchers, and connect emerging and seasoned nutrition professionals in South Asia. Uh, we ended up rejecting 198 uh, submissions, not to say that they were uh, subpar, but just because we couldn't accommodate everybody in our very tight schedule. Um, and, and this year's call was the most competitive. I'm, I'm being told that I have 30 seconds, so uh, you all have access to the program, but we have four learning labs, two of which were this morning, and there's two more tomorrow. We have four plenary sessions and 10 abstract-based uh, thematic sessions. Please look at the, um, the handout, um, the program, and um, I know it's going to be hard choosing where you go to. And I will just stop here uh, and thank you all for being here and all our um, collaborators. Thank you.
thank you, Neha, for a very uh, short overview, but you know, I think very effective overview of what this conference is and why it means so much. You know, we've been having many conversations outside as well about the value of a conference that's not just a friends and family conference, but one that is abstract based and, and the value of that in helping us identify uh, incredible talent around uh, the region. Um, let me now hand to uh, Jamaluddin Ahmed for your opening remarks. Uh, I understand that you're going to say a little bit to us about what equity and inclusion means uh, to you and to the, to the work and, and the, the space that you occupy. Thank you. You have about five minutes as well and our timekeepers are, are right there. Respected Chair, Honorable Minister, Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development of Government of Nepal, distinguished speakers, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I learned from an, from an article that says, people from two earth-sized planets can be fed by food that can be produced on this planet. And that too, creating any new farmland, without creating any new farmland. If that's so, forget the other planet. How come a large chunk of our own population is living with hunger and malnutrition? Is faulty supply chain management responsible for that? Or improper distribution or wasting? If we, or the chair has shared a few questions with the speakers, and we are supposed to answer those questions. To be honest, I don't have any answer to those questions. Instead of answering those questions, I am adding more questions. In this concept note, if we used a Cassie sentence, which is, not everyone starts from the same point. Perhaps that explains the root causes of deprivation of certain segment of our, of our population from their rights. The persistent poverty and hunger of this segment testifies that the current food and nutrition systems are unjust, while climate change is an added difficulty. In this event, IFRI has laid the most emphasis on equity and inclusion, and very rightly so. We live in a region where limited food production capacity or limited resources are not the only challenges. Distribution of food and nutrition and access to essential services remain worrying concerns. South Asian countries have experienced a remarkable economic growth during the last few decades, along with subsequent trans transformation in social, economic, and food systems. For a long time, our policymakers have been focusing food and nutrition as priority areas and have achieved somewhat success in doing so. However, the region still has a long way to go to ensure equity and inclusivity of all especially that of the marginalized, marginalized people. Due to COVID-19 pandemic and spillover effect of Ukraine war, uh, these marginalized people's adversaries are plummeting further, which warrants tailor-made strategy for them. More than half of the population living in South Asia are dependent on the agriculture sector for their livelihoods, albeit facing many adversaries. Ironically, these people who ensure others' food and nutrition nutrition security do not have security of their own food and nutrition, which guide them from one crisis to another. There is no quick fix for, for this. However, as half of the land in, of South Asia is arable, there is a high potentiality of the agriculture and food system in the region to effectively address the widespread poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. It's an uphill battle, to, battle but doable. An important, important precursor for winning this battle is taking cohesive action with greater coordination among all the players, like uh, policymakers, private sectors, international partners, think tanks, experts, producers, and consumers. We need to bring in necessary tweaks in our traditional system to ensure equity and inclusivity of people from all spectrums. I will uh, conclude, I have time constraint, I know. I'll conclude thanking IFRI for advocating relentlessly for reinvention of a food system that caters to the need of the poorest of the poor. I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Jamal, if I may, because you know, I, I think you're right to pose more questions. This is an audience of researchers, 
this is an audience of people thinking how to take things forward. And we do have to ask ourselves lots of tough questions as we go along. Uh, Dr. Kachan, let me hand it over to you for opening remarks. Again, with much gratitude for your partnership here. Uh, thank you, Dr. Menon. Uh, I, I don't know whether I have a time limit, uh, like five minutes, or I can overshoot by that. <laughs> so then, because I, I must also uh, speak about uh, ideas, so I may take another two minutes or so. So Honorable uh, Minister Dr. Vedanam Vassal, uh, Session Chair Dr. Purnima Menon, distinguished speakers, guests, and participants. It is an honor to stand before you today as the Executive Director of the Institute for Integrated Development Studies, IIDS, at the Delivering for New Teaching in South Asia Conference. We are gathered here to address one of the most pressing challenges of our time, ensuring equitable access to affordable, safe, and nutrition and the adequate food across South Asia. In the dynamic landscape of our region, the complexities surrounding food security necessitate an approach that goes beyond mere identification of issues. Implementation research is proving to be the key that unlocks the doors to unsustainable solutions. This approach has been advocated for during this conference, not only identifies barriers, but also promotes collaboration among different stakeholders, including researchers, policymakers, private sector development agencies, and communities. It guides interventions and aids in the development of strategies that dismantle systemic obstacles and promote equity and inclusion. We firmly believe that by understanding the perspectives of the affected, including the marginalized, the poor, and the vulnerable, we can develop tailored solutions that truly resonate and bring about lasting change. Nepal's journey in tackling on the nutrition has been marked by both notable achievements and persistent hurdles. Despite the challenges, the country has dis displayed commendable strides in curbing the prevalence of maternal and child undernutrition since the mid 90s. In 2004, the government of Nepal introduced the first national nutrition policy and strategy, a sector specific initiative aimed at combating malnutrition in women and children. Notably, Nepal garnered global recognition for its efforts in expanding the provision of essential nutrients, leveraging community-based channels to ensure the widespread delivery of vital nutrition services to women and children. Although this critical Nutrition interventions have been effectively implemented. The persistence of stunting remains a significant concern, while the rate of wasting shows limited improvement. The root of the nutrition challenge lies in maternal undernourishment, insufficient infant and young child feeding practices, and socioeconomic disparities. This highlights the necessity for more comprehensive strategies that not only target direct nutritional interventions, but also address broader socioeconomic, political, and cultural determinants of health. The role of multi-sectoral and multi-stakeholder action and collaborative approach cannot be overstated in our efforts to combat the prevailing nutrition obstacles. Nepal's adoption of a comprehensive approach through its first five-year multi-sector nutrition plan 2013 to 2017 has been pivotal in its progress. Stemming from the global scaling of nutrition, SON movement of 2010, this plan integrated efforts across various sectors, including health, ag agriculture, education, wars, social welfare, and local government as part of a 10 year vision to reduce stunting. Although substantial headway was made in the linear growth of children during the MDG era, Nepal entered the SDG era with 35.8% of children under the age of five experiencing stunted growth and 9.7% facing acute malnutrition. The slow progress in addressing stunting and wasting can be attributed to two primary factors, inadequate nutrition among women and suboptimal practices concerning infant and young child feeding. Nevertheless, the recent efforts have shown promise in achieving the SDG targets 
pertinent to child obesity and notable progress in addressing both stunting and wasting objectives. Looking ahead, it is imperative to ensure equitable access to nutritious, safe, and sustainable diets, particularly for the vulnerable segments of society, considering the prevalent socioeconomic, sociocultural, and geographic disparities in the region. Even though over the past 20 years, several South Asian countries have achieved a rapid decline in child stunting, undernutrition remains a significant issue. Its impacts encompass both immediate and prolonged cognitive, productivity, and reproductive setbacks alongside increased mortality and illness. This calls for prioritizing and investing in evidence-based interventions, including balancing investments between nutrition-specific and nutrition-sensitive intervention. As we gather here to deliberate on the critical issue of nutrition in South Asia, IIDS is proud to announce the launch of the IIDS Structural Reform 2.0, an ambitious initiative aimed at spearheading the second generation reforms through innovative ideas and research-based evidence for policymaking. Through this reform initiative, we aspire to contribute to the process of economic transformation of Nepal to achieve respectable economic growth, equity, sustainability, and resilience, focusing particularly on key areas such as governance, agriculture, natural resource management, human assets, finance, and digitalization. We seek to reshape the landscape of Nepal's development sector by fostering disruptive innovation that challenges the traditional narrative and generates fresh insights and evidence tailored to the evolving context and priorities of Nepal, promoting local knowledge to find solutions to the local problems and balance and mutually conducive partnerships. The key topical areas of this conference, agriculture, food environments, health system, diets, and social protection, will play a pivotal role in strengthening our understanding and leadership capacity within the framework of structural reform 2.0, particularly concerning human capital development and agriculture reform in the context of overarching food security transformation. Leveraging the insights gained from this conference, we aim to integrate innovative strategies and evidence-based solutions into our reform framework. As we chart the way forward, let us draw inspiration from the success achieved while remain cognizant of the work that lies ahead it is imperative that we continue to foster an environment of collaboration, innovation, and inclusivity to ensure that no one is left behind in our quest for a healthier, nourished, and prosperous South Asia. I'm grateful to the opportunity to address this distinguished gathering today, and I look forward to the impactful discussions that will shape the future of nutrition in our region. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Professor, Professor Couch. And I think your words remind us exactly of why we're here today, but also of the value of taking you know, what we deliberate and the evidence that we see in a regional platform like Delivering for Nutrition to national priorities and, and to supporting national discourse. We are, that's exactly what we hope for. And you know, we're grateful that you, know, you will help to take some of that forward in Nepal. All right, last but not least, uh, Shivai, also representing one of the key conference co-hosts, I welcome you to share your remarks. Good morning, uh, colleagues. It is a great pleasure to be with you today. Uh, His Excellency, Honorable Minister, uh, respected Chair, uh, distinguished fellow speakers. I bring you warm greetings and best wishes on behalf uh, of our regional director for UNICEF in South Asia. We feel privileged to be associated with the Delivering for Nutrition in South Asia conference. The theme of the conference, equity and inclusion, goes to the heart of some of the key issues that hold us back from accelerating progress on nutrition in the region. The discussions at this conference are both much needed and come at a critical juncture, marking the, mid, the beginning of a new phase for accelerated progress on uh, the nutrition targets uh, for SDG 2030. Progress in South Asia is critical for global progress. 
Let me start with some positive news. Over the past two decades, South Asia has reduced child malnutrition by over a third. We see a third reduction in uh, child stunting, which shows that positive change is possible. The not so positive news is that the pace of progress is slow and that this progress is inequitable. The poorest and most marginalized children are disproportionately affected and left behind. And millions of children and women struggle to access the nutritious diets, essential nutrition services, and positive nutrition practices. I would like to share some reflections uh, through my travels in the region from conversations with families, frontline workers, community leaders, it is clear that the vulnerable and most marginalized children, women and girls, are most impacted by the nutrition crisis uh, in the region. The layers of inequities that our, our chair reminded us earlier on. This leads me to two important issues which uh, we think, if adequately addressed, may offer us a route out of the nutrition crisis within the region. First, the nutrition crisis in the region is fundamentally conditioned by the social, political, economic circumstances that families and communities find themselves in. More so, it is a gendered intergenerational malnutrition cycle that we must break. In March this year, UNICEF released a global report on uh, adolescent girls and women's nutrition. The findings were quite sobering, exposing the depth of the undernutrition crisis uh, in the region. Marginalized girls and women from the poorest households are twice as likely to suffer from malnutrition compared to those from better off households. These inequalities are driven by harmful social norms and persistent discrimination against women and girls. We see the ripple effects in the large burden of child malnutrition, which uh, has been alluded to by the other speakers. Uh, second, food systems in the region are failing children. It is urgent to say that food system is failing to provide many children in the region with the nutritious foods they require, but also protection from nutrient poor, ultra processed foods. Millions of children, especially the youngest, the poorest and most marginalized do not, do, do not have access to minimum nutritious foods that they need for healthy growth. At UNICEF, we believe food, food system transformation agenda is a child rights agenda we should be aligned with children's rights to food, nutrition, health, information, protection, and a sustainable planet. There are significant challenges, but all hope is not lost. Change is possible and cycles can be broken. I hope dialogue from this conference will offer research-based insights and suggestions on the kind of change that we need in the region on improving equity and inclusion among various systems and delivery platforms that affect nutrition. We need to take a critical look at what's constraining progress, learn from each other's experience of what has worked, and identify evidence-based actions that are needed to accelerate progress in the region. Let me conclude by highlighting uh, a few strategic actions that we believe are critical for improving equity and inclusion to accelerate progress on nutrition in South Asia. First, we need border action and greater accountability to end child food poverty, improve adolescent girls and women's nutrition. Second, we need to be more intentional in our efforts to address disparities and inequalities that slow progress on nutrition. Extra effort and targeted nutrition action are needed to reach the most vulnerable children, adolescent girls and women who are at economic, social, and geographic disadvantage. And third, we need to bring services closer to these population groups. And fourth, convergent acceleration that accounts for the harmful gender and social norms that negatively impact adolescent girls and women's nutrition are needed. And lastly, we need to strengthen our collective accountabilities for progress, harnessing the power of data and evidence to inform policy and program decisions, but also to track progress and strengthen our accountabilities. Together, we can transform the lives of millions of children, 
girls and women across South Asia. Let us join hands to redouble our efforts on improving equity and uh, inclusion. When we make equitable smart investments in young children, girls and women, everyone wins. Women win, children win, nations win. I wish you a highly successful dialogue for the next two days. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jivai. Let me also take this opportunity to uh, once again thank the Honorable Minister for his uh, really exceptional opening remarks, as well as all of the other speakers here today who've reminded us why it's absolutely so essential that we focus on the topic of equity and inclusion in reshaping what happens for nutrition, for food systems, and, and much, much more. Um, I want to remind all of us also that this is a research and implementation focused conference. Uh, in itself, in its premise, it is equitable because it allows space for people who we may not know who are doing important work to, to come here to present their work. Um, and, and overall, we really hope that the conduct of the conference itself also demonstrates equity. Um, I, I want to uh, close this uh, session by uh, reflecting just on a couple of different things. Um, you know, in being here today with all of you, I, I wear a few different hats. Uh, as a senior director at IFPRI, I'm supporting a lot of our work that happens not just in the region, but also globally um, in, in a similar position with the Systems Transformation Science Group of the CGIR, which is our um, uh, convening, the convening network for 15 CGIR centers. Um, you know, we are also examining very critical issues of equity and inclusion across our system, across how we do our research, across what research we do and what evidence uh, we sort of convene people around. Um, and last but not least, in, uh, as, as a, a co-lead of the CGIR's regional integrated initiative in South Asia with Tim Krupnik, who's sitting right there in the front, um, we take the idea of bringing together people in the region to deliberate on these issues very, very seriously. And so we are really glad, you know, from an institutional perspective, from the perspective of our research programs, uh, to have this incredible collaboration with all of you uh, today and tomorrow and really beyond. Uh, D4N itself has been a multi-year enterprise. And personally, I'm looking forward to seeing it grow strength to strength as we move from year to year and to bring more people into what I think needs to be an even bigger tent to solve the problems of nutrition, of transforming food systems, of delivering equity on multiple dimensions to really help South Asia meet uh, the SDGs. We believe that evidence is a critical contributor to the actions that people take around this world. And that is the contribution of this particular conference, the sharing of knowledge, the sharing of experience, the sharing of evidence, and the sharing of data. Um, and so I want to thank everybody again for being here this morning. Thank you, um, Honorable Chief Guest, again, uh, and to all our incredible partners who have been just such a part of a long journey that brings us here and takes us forward to the, to the next years. So without further ado, uh, let us close this opening session. Um, and I will then be handing over to uh, Neha Kumar, who will chair the keynote session in just a moment. Thank you, Purnima. We just have a small token uh, for all of you on the panel. So I request my IDS uh, colleagues to kindly yeah, do the honors. Thank you, thank you, all of you. Yeah, let's have a group photo. It's right. 
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much.